Inverse kinematics has to be one of my most requested topics. So why have I never covered it before? Well, it is in fact a legacy feature. Even though it's right here on the main timeline, it hasn't been the standard practice for rigging and animating characters in Toon Boom Harmony for about 10 years now. Things like the deformer system, the constraint system, and the master controller system have proven to be much more versatile methods when it comes to studio and series based animation. The problem with that, however, is as rigs have become more and more dense, more feature rich and more complicated, they can take days to make. Which is all well and good if you're going to be making a 20 or a 50 episode series with such models, but many of my viewers are just hobbyists, making little animations and characters for themselves, for their personal social medias, or just for fun. In which case, a system like this, being able to pick up the end of a shape and have all of the other layers just know what to do, may actually be for you. It's very quick and very simple to do. However, because of its age, to get it working correctly actually requires one to go against many currently understood and universal practices that Harmony users have come to understand. I'll point those out as we go. Being an older feature and something I recommend to people wishing to make smaller and quicker builds, the node network won't be required this time. This is this is something for Toon Boom Advanced and Essentials users to have a try at as well. Here is my standard bone drawing here. I'm going to increase its exposure all the way across for the sake of this demonstration. I'm going to copy it four times for a total of five. Duplicating or making clones, uh, at least for what I'm intending to do here. In this case, I'm going to clone drawings so I can update this artwork later if need be. But keyframes will not be interfered with. And this is where we break tradition. It's standard practice across pretty much all of Harmony that if you're going to be doing some sort of keyframe or tween based animation to put your drawing inside of a peg first and keep all of that data up here. But not today. Pegs seem to get in the way when it comes to inverse kinematics. We want all of our parenting to be happening directly from one drawing layer to the next. So I'm going to drag each one up inside the one before it so they nestle inside of each other like this. If you are working within the node view, you'll see a nice healthy daisy chain like that. Each drawing layer connected to the one below it. It's important before doing this though, that I set up the pivot at the very top. So it will swing from the correct position. If you haven't done this, you're just gonna have to go through each layer and put it back in the same spot. No real problem. Uh, now working down each child, I'm going to move the whole section down like this. Notice we are indeed keyframing directly on the drawings themselves. The parent I'm going to swing to the side and place here, just so we have more screen to work with. And honestly, we're done. This is ready to go. Underneath the transform tool is the inverse kinematics tool, and all of the bones will show up. Sometimes the last one sort of sticks up on an angle like this. I'm not really sure why. Uh, and grab and things might start moving properly. It is quite unpredictable though. During some of my tests before this video, things weren't working at all. And picking up one of the bones would just simply move the one on the end and everything else would stay completely locked. It's very unpredictable and I'm quite surprised that it worked first time for me here. If this is happening to you, select all of the layers at once like this. Go to the advanced animation tools, right click and select advanced animation if this toolbar is not here. The rotation tool and rotate them all a bit like that. So notice because all of them are selected, the rotation happens to each one independently because they're all daisy chained, that movement is amplified. By just pushing everything off zero a little bit, it gives the bones guidance as to what direction everything should sort of collapse in. Grabbing on one of the joints themselves sort of puts an anchor, so notice now that the last two continue pointing forwards as everything else collapses and bends around it. Like in my first uh, demonstration at the start, if you give everything a, a bit of a degree of influence first by uh, rotating or moving their pivots manually, then that will of course affect the influence as well. So now I can get a bit more of an accordion type bend. The flexibility of this structure can be taken a little bit further still. 
when the inverse kinematics tool is selected over in tool properties, we get a bunch of different things for us to muck around with. The one I'd really like to point out is the nail. This is designed for the planting of feet to keep them stuck on the ground when the rest of the character might be moving. So here's the foot placed on the ground. I'll select this one and activate the nail. Notice it turns red. So now that is going to be planted in place when I let go. And if I grab any other bone, well, it might still swing at the ankle, but that's okay, because next to the nail, you'll notice there is a lock rotation. So with that put on as well, now grabbing these other in-between portions, the foot will stay planted as this sort of simulated knee effect will continue to bend. The hip stays put though. If this was a character, if there was a whole body up here somewhere and it was bobbing up and down, how can we get it so that the foot stays still and the rest of the character can move? When a foot has been planted, normally that means you want to now pick up the hip and have that move around. Well, fortunately, that's what this button just above the nail is for. So by selecting the topmost hip layer and then activating that button, you will notice a cross has appeared on that hip, allowing us to now pick up and move the leg around. And you'll see that foot is not going anywhere. Keep in mind, however, that something does need to be nailed in order for that plus to work. If this nail is undone, you'll see that grabbing that plus now does not have the desired effect, but turning on a new nail halfway down, so on this knee, it will now pivot everything around there. Uh, of course, disabling the rotation there. Ah, there we go. And that really is the basis of it. As long as you keep to this basic structure of just drawings parented inside other drawings, you should be fine. It's simply a confusing feature for those who learned the standard method of using Toon Boom of having pegs in places. I'm tempted to show you all those structures and why they don't work, but I might save it for another time. There's still quite a bit to talk about. So coming up, I would like to talk about those things. Uh, I'd like to try rigging a character in its entirety using this old system. And also remember one of the wonderful things about Harmony is it is harmonious. There are several different ways to rig to choose from. And if you're clever about it, then those different ways can be combined in certain ways. So is there untapped potential to bring inverse kinematics back in some modern builds? Just how incompatible is it when combined with envelopes, master controllers, constraints, and things like that? Be sure to subscribe if you're keen to find out. <laughs>